Okay, let's have a quick look at um, neurons, how nerve impulses travel down them, and, and, and action potentials. So first off, we have a, a neuron. Um, we, ha we can have a look at a, a few main parts that you're probably familiar with. The dendrites, um, which are those, those parts of the neuron which receive the message initially. Um, the cell body, which contains the nucleus. The long axon, which travels down. That's, that's the longest part of the cell. Um, and that's, that's really where we're going to focus on with our uh, nerve impulse. Um, and the axon terminals, uh, which would, would, in a lot of cases, butt up to the next nerve cell. Um, the myelin sheath around here, uh, along here allows our nerve impulse to skip along various sections. So rather than travel along every part of the cell membrane, it can skip and do little jumps. And they're spaced just, just the right distance along to allow it to jump down and travel very quickly down the axon. Okay, let's just have a close-up look of, of the uh, axon here. Um, and what normally happens is we have a, an iron pump which is continually pumping sodium ions to one side. And what that does is it creates um, a difference between the outside and the inside of the cell, a potential difference, a difference in charge. And we have lots of positive uh, ions relative to the inside, which would appear quite negative. When the cell membrane is stimulated by the nerve impulse, uh, these sodium ions here all travel inside to the, of the cell and what we have is a, the, a difference in potential instead of the relatively negative situation on the inside and positive on the out we have the opposite lots of positive ions inside the cell and that potential difference or difference in charge is what causes that electrical impulse to move along the cell membrane so to achieve this we have um, a few specific proteins in the cell membrane First off, we have this sodium-potassium pump, which is continually, nice and, on, a, on a nice, slow, regular basis, pumping sodium out and pumping potassium in. Okay, um, It pumps out quite a lot of sodium, so it can create this positive um, charge on the outside of the cell. The other two proteins we have is one, uh, which is a sodium pump, which when activated pumps the sodium in, and another, the potassium pump, which can pump the potassium out. So let's have a look at these in the ax axon. So let's just have a look at how, how this nerve impulse, or action potential, travels down uh, the axon of the neuron. It travels from one end to the other, from the dendrites down to the axon terminal. Now, first off, we have our sodium-potassium pumps setting up things, pumping sodium to one side and potassium to another, pumping lots of sodium to this side so that we have a potential difference. Next stage is when the, uh, the neuron is stimulated, the proteins of the sodium channel are stimulated by an electrical impulse. Um, they open, and they allow all this sodium to travel into the, into the nerve cell. And that creates that difference in potential. And that difference in potential is the electrical impulse that, that stimulates the, ne the next section of the membrane, stimulates the next sodium pump to allow its, its sodium ions to travel in. And, and it travels continually down the membrane. Now, after it's been stimulated um, and been de depolarized to create that difference in potential, it's, it's gradually repolarized by the potassium, or well it's quickly repolarized by the potassium moving back outside of the cell. And the cell, the difference in potential is gradually restored um, during a resting potential with the action of the sodium potassium iron pump, again pumping sodium to the outside and potassium to restore it just like it was before. So this is often drawn in a, in a graph um, sh showing the action potential. So let's just relate this to our cell membrane um, and what we've just looked at. Now our sodium ions at the start, lots of sodium ions on the outside, when they first move into the cell, that increases the positive charge in the cell. And we can see that on our, our graph here at point A, when the sodium ions travel in, we have an increase in our, our potential inside the cell. When, the, when it reaches a high point, that's where the potassium ions 
flow back out of the cell and to, to, to repolarize the cell membrane. And that's what we see at point B, the potassium um, channels opening and the potassium ions flowing into the cell, repolarizing things. The next stage we see is the membrane gradually getting restored by the potassium, sodium potassium ion pump, putting the sodium ions on the outside and the potassium back on the inside, restoring it back to normal. And that's what we see at point C, gradually restoring it, um, getting during our resting potential, getting back up to that normal normal stage. When we want to get really scientific, we, we look at that on, on, on some, some pretty detailed graphs and we can see that normally um, the resting state is along here and there's nothing happening. If we get a nerve impulse, it, it's going to fail to initially initiate until it reaches a particular threshold. When it reaches that point, the sodium channels open, the sodium goes into the cells and that's creating our impulse or action potential. The membrane is then repolarized and the potassium ions flow into the cell to restore things back to normal. Um, and the next stage is when that sodium potassium ion pump uh, restores everything and brings it back to its normal state. Now during this refractory period, that cell membrane can't be stimulated. The sodium ions aren't back over the other side. And that's a really important thing because that means that the cell membrane can't be stimulated and the impulse can't go back from the direction it came. So it means that the impulse is going to only um, travel to the protein channels and the parts of the membrane that haven't just been stimulated. So that really controls our nerve impulse traveling in one direction.